okay, we're live recording. So if I could just ask, um, Eileen, could you open us in a word of prayer, please? Yes, okay, see, okay. Thank you once more for gathering us tonight. Thank you for the inspiration to pursue for um, team for your anointing for us ready so that's and uh, we will conduct for those who are in the fight in jesus name we pray amen amen okay great so let me go ahead and start screen sharing here and what we'll do is let me just review let me just review from last week our prayer from last week and uh and then we'll we lord, uh, lord willing we can finish it great okay so this is the second prayer that we're we're studying and the purpose behind this uh we want to pray uh biblically and we want to pray like the early church did and what what Jesus Christ commanded us. And so the first prayer that we had unpacked was the Lord's Prayer and some commands concerning prayer. And then the second prayer, especially for those who were not here with us last week, uh, we're focused on the second prayer, uh, the first prayer of the early church that was recorded. Uh, and that was found in uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 24 until 31. And so I have that on top of the screen. And this is what we've already discussed and so let me just quickly read the prayer for for us just to, to remind us of what's being stated and as i read the prayer i want us to be thinking about how the prayer is similar to the lord's prayer and how it is different and and not trying to put to pit the two up against each other but for us to see how the two complement each other and how each prayer is unique how each prayer is similar and how we can really expand our prayer life. Before I do that, can I just have everyone mute their mics? And then if you have a comment or question, you can just unmute. There's, there's some feedback uh, coming. So if everyone, everyone can just mute their mic. So let me go ahead. I'll just read the prayer quickly. And then we'll, we, we do have some questions that were brought up from last week that we'll discuss. And then also we want to finish looking at the relationships and then also draw some conclusions. So let's go ahead and read the prayer of the apostles after they had just experienced some, some suffering and persecution. They address the Lord God. Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city, there were gathered together against your holy servant, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel to do whatever your hand and plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Wow. Very strong prayer and, and quite different in some ways than the Lord's Prayer. A, a quite different type of prayer. You know, and so 
one thing we need to think about is that even though the Lord commanded them to pray, pray in this pattern, the, the pattern is not strict and it's not word for word. Here you have a, a quite different prayer, but there are there are there are similarities and there are differences. Let me just let me just highlight some of our comments from last week, our initial comments and observations, and also observations we made as we studied the prayer. Uh, number one. There was uh, the beginning of the prayer was focused upon God. It was a praise to God for who he is. Number two, another comment was the address to God was different. In, in the Lord's prayer, it was our, our Father who is in heaven. But in this prayer, it's, it's a sovereign Lord. Sovereign Lord. So it's different. Okay. Uh, something else was there is an emphasis now upon the Holy Spirit, whereas in the Lord's Prayer we talked about how the Holy Spirit was implicit or implied. The Holy Spirit is implied in the uh, leading us not into temptation. The Holy Spirit is also implied in thy kingdom come. We discussed how the, the, the coming of the kingdom and the works that Jesus were in accordance with the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit implies the work of, of the kingdom is being carried out. And so, and so um, the Holy Spirit is present in the prayer, uh, the, 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 the petition to come. And then we also talked about how, uh, whereas in the Lord's Prayer, right, the Lord's Prayer, it's Heavenly Father and Son, yes. right, Sonship, Father, Father, Sonship relationship. Here, everyone's addressed as, as servant, and it's a, it's a master, a Lord, servant relationship. And we're, we're going to discuss this before we conclude this prayer, but really both analogy or both relationships are true. Both relationships are true. Both relationships describe our relationship with God Almighty. We are, his, we are in the truest sense, uh, uh, Spiritually and eternally speaking, his sons, adopted sons, and at the same time, he is our Lord, he is our King, and we are his servants. So both can be true. <laughs> we, don't, we don't negate one for the other. Both are true. Uh, several other things we notice here is uh, we talked about this, that it wasn't a request to remove from the trial, but strength to go through the trial. And so the petition was not remove us. It was grant us boldness to declare your word. And we're going to come back and discuss this a little bit. Um, and I, I, do, I do want to return to this idea. So if I forget to talk about this, um, uh, please remind me. Because this here, they do not ask to be removed, but they ask to speak the word boldly and there's a reason for that there's a reason for that in the con in this immediate context and in the context of, of 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 acts that's very important and so if i forget please remind me to come back number six this is a corporate prayer so i i did not put it here but in in the previous context it's they prayed together so whereas in the lord's prayer it's, it's, it's privately in your closet, right? Here, it's a corporate prayer. Uh, let me just, let's just read that. Let, let's, let's go to the passage. Let's, let's read that. I don't want to miss this. So if we go to Acts, Acts 4, 24. And here we go. Verse 24. And when they heard it, they lifted up their voices together to God and said, and this is the prayer, okay? So what I want us to see here is that uh, when we talked about this too, Jesus' prayer to pray in secret is not, is not uh, the final word for prayer. It's not that if you ever pray in public or you ever pray with other people, you're sinning. The whole point is that you're praying in public to be seen. You're pray praying in public to, to praise to praise men. And so Jesus was not preventing or 
uh, prohibiting public prayer, but public prayer with, with wrong motives, okay? And this is a perfect example. They're praying together. They're, it's, it's a public corporate prayer among the believers. Uh, number seven, we, we're going to talk about this a little more. This is so... Uh, the predetermined... The predetermined... Uh, plan of God. We're going to discuss that. That's what the text says. So we cannot change what the Word of God says. We need to try to understand and, and to think of it uh, maturely and wisely and, and seek to, to, to synthesize all of Scripture. But the text here is very clear that whatever happened in the first century when Christ was crucified, when he died, when he was burned, when he rose again, occurred in complete agreement and according to God's plan. And that was predestined before. So we, 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 uh, we could say predestined or predetermined. Uh, both would be, they mean the same thing. Uh, and of course, we're getting into <laughs> debates, <laughs> theological debates. I don't, want to do, I don't want to debate theology. I do want us to, to draw conclusions. And then just, just lastly, just two other things. Uh, Jesus said to pray for his enemies. That was a comment that was made. And what about the fairness with Pilate and others? So the implication, um, it is interesting that our question immediately, immediately goes to how is this fair when, when it seems in, in, when they pray this, this, this here. This here was a, a source of comfort. This is very pastoral, okay? This is not a theological circle. This is not a theological debate, okay? And this, and this, this is a huge debate. We talk about the, the, the pre predestination, different theological debates, but here... This, they were not having a theological debate. They were not, they were not uh, trying to reconcile. This was a source of comfort for them. This was a source of comfort. And so really, uh, we need to go a little deeper because this is, uh, uh, our pastoral ministries, our leadership ministries, whatever it is, we have different ministries, even if you're not a pastor, if you're a leader in a church, one of our jobs is to comfort people. And there's actually great comfort in these truths. So let's think about that. Um, so before, before we go, let's do this, okay? Let's finish working through these relationships here quickly. And then let's discuss some of the, the theological conclusions, some of the practical applications of this prayer. Um, or does someone want to make an observation or a question before we begin? We can do that too. I don't want, I want everyone to be on the same page. So is there, is there a question anyone has or an observation? Or we could just, we could just finish verse 29, 30, and 31. I'll just... Take a, 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 a 10 second pause if you want to ask a question. Okay. I think it's self explanatory. We're, more, we're dealing more with the ramifications, the gravity of the situation. So let's go ahead. Let's look at, let's work at verse 29. So what I'll do is. I'll, I'll break down verse 29, and then I'll start calling on someone to help me with verses 30 and 31. So I'll go ahead and do verse 29 for us. I'm sorry. I'll do verse, yeah, I'll do verse 29. So <clears throat> up until this point in the prayer, I just want to make one preface. Up until this point in the prayer, I'm, I'm going to count the lines, okay? I'm going to count the lines of, of sentences. We have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten lines, ten stanzas, maybe something along those lines. Before there's any requests, 
there, there, there's no request. They're just describing the person and the work of, of, this, of a sovereign Lord. Let, let's look now at verse 29. I'm going to first identify verbs. Whenever I'm, when I'm preparing for a sermon, the verbs are the most important. If I'm preparing a sermon, a Bible study, the verbs are the most important because they're going to tell us what we're going to do. They're going to give us assurance. They're going to give us a promise, a warning. So, the, so when, we're, when we're teaching, it's so important that we understand what type of action, what type of verb is occurring so that we can identify that for, for those who are listening so that they know as well. So I see here, I see, I see two main verbs. I see two main verbs. The first is this one here. Look. So look is a, is a main verb. And uh, we don't have to go there, but from the context and just looking at it logically, it seems to be a uh, entreaty because they're asking God to do something. It's an action, but it's not yet realized. The action has not yet occurred. They're asking the Lord to do something. Lord, look, look upon, look, look, look upon what? So then the next question is, what, what is he to look upon? And so the object, of course, then is their threats, okay? So, let me just do that again. The object of the request is to look upon their threats, okay? So think about this for a second. The, the, the threats are coming from, where, question, where, who is the they? Who is the they here? Can someone tell me who the they is? Oh, sorry. Who is this? It could be Bethany saying Herod or Pontius Pilate. It could be, let's, uh, is someone else making a comment here? Uh, Eileen's signal is bad. I'm sorry to hear that. I hear someone. Do someone want to try? Is it the rulers, the leaders? <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so let's, so. Let's, let's double check. I think you're correct. Bethany's saying Herod and Pontius Pilate. Let's, that's where, when we're unsure, it could be, it could be, uh, it could be, it could be your, uh, it could be, Herod and Pontius Pilate. But that's in the prayer, and that's referring to the crucifixion. So let's look back in the previous context. The previous context in verse 23, they're, they're standing before the chief priests and the elders. Look at when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. So they're really suffering at the hands of Israel. Or the, uh, you said rulers, grace, Bethany said Herod. So both are, you're both correct in that it was the it was the the rulers of israel so herod was a ruler of israel and and we find out later that herod also causes more persecution so uh at least uh israel leaders okay now these are the leaders that put jesus to death though, right they turned jesus over they turned Jesus over to be crucified, correct? And so now, now they're threatening Jesus' followers. 
It's very serious. We have a new guest. Is that Alex? Alex, can you hear us? Okay, Alex is there. Maybe he'll maybe he'll connect his audio shortly. Um, okay, so so the the threats are Israel leaders, and then the second command is this. Uh, grant. That's part of of the of the action. But grant what? What are they asking to be granted? And and we see the second part here. A, a continuation of the action. So there's two there's two actions. Look upon the threats and then Grant your servants to con continue to speak what? What's the object? The object here is your word. Okay? So, this is completely focused upon we're not going to, we're not asking to be removed from the trial. We're asking that you would give us the strength to persevere through the trial and to speak the truth. Now, the next thing is we want to identify the actor. Who is the request? The request is focused upon the Lord. So this is a request to the Lord for these two things. Okay? And then we have this claw, we have this phrase here with all boldness. With all boldness. Does everyone see that there? This is the manner. So we, we could go to the Let's, let's go there really quick. The handout that I've shared before, if I go to grammatical relationships and I'm looking down here under adverbial relationships and I come down here to manner, everyone can see that. Manner, the definition is, this relationship describes how an action is to be carried out. Okay? So this is, they're, they're, they're asking to proclaim the word, and then they're asking not only to, to have the strength, the ability to proclaim the word, but they're asking that, that they would be given the manner of boldness to proclaim the word. And then just lastly here, you have a second object. The second object is your servants. Okay. Now, before we move on, I do want to highlight what someone else already ob observed, which is very important, okay? What I'm going to highlight here is that, is that the, 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 the followers of Jesus, they call themselves servants. Jesus is called a servant twice. He's called a servant, a holy servant, twice. And then look at what David is called. David is called a servant as well. And this is this is in relationship to. To this. So pe people struggle with 
especially in the church, is that Jesus, Jesus is my, is my homeboy. Jesus is my friend. Uh, Jesus is the one who's with me. And, and Jesus does call himself the friend of the disciples. So I'm not making fun of that. But, but sometimes pe- we don't have a fear. We don't have a fear of God. And when we're looking at a father-son relationship, father-son, right, the focus is not fear. If there's a good relationship between the father and son, the focus is not fear and reverence. It's respect. It's relationship. It's close relationship. But here, this is, this is, a, this is the, 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 the tone. The tone. What is the tone of this prayer? What is the tone? Reverence and fear. For whom? Who are they afraid of? Are they afraid of the, the Israel leaders? Are they afraid of? Are they afraid of, of Herod who just killed Jesus? That just the most atro- a, 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 a terrible form of of, of killing. Who are they afraid of in this prayer? Where is their respect? Where is their fear? It it seems that, that they are more focused upon the relationship with the Lord versus, of course, there's there's an, a component of fear of the of the Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles and the rulers because they're suffering, but they have a greater fear and respect of God. Do you, everyone see that? And that's very, that's very important because the human component of us says, of course, we're afraid, but, but they have a greater respect for the sovereign Lord and they're asking him to give them the strength to, to, to boldly declare his word, okay? Now, um, my question, I'll, I'll answer the question I brought up before. Why, why would they not ask to be, why would they not ask to be delivered? And I'm, and I'm thinking about in the context of Acts, I'm thinking in the context of, especially the beginning of Acts, the purpose of Acts. Why, I, I'm looking for an answer from the context from what we know of Acts. Why is it that they're asking for the, the boldness to, to, to proclaim the word and not simply to, to be removed from this trial? I, w- I want someone to answer that question, or at least tell me a reason why they're not asking to be removed, but they're asking for the boldness to persevere through it. Anyone can answer. Tell them we're recording so we can. Does anyone have? Go ahead, someone. I hear someone talking. Let, let's let's go to. Uh, Let's go to Acts chapter 1 and try to answer the question why why they would not be asking to remove but strength to 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 do this. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. So this is describing Jesus, he given commands, he presented himself to them after suffering and death. Look at, look at Acts 1, 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed in his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be what? My witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth.
Now I'm pretty sure, let me just check one thing here. I don't want to misspeak. Um, let me see here. I want to double check here. The end of the earth is not location. Maybe it is. I'm, I'm going to see here. Does anyone know? Is it referring to location or time? The Great Commission is time, right? He'll be with you to the end of the age. I'm seeing here if it also says that as well. Um, let's look here. Okay, so so in 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 um. In the, the, in the Great Commission, it's to the end of the age. Here it's to the end of the earth, okay? So it's, it's focused on location, purely location, not, not time. Great Commission is the, the, to the end of the age, okay? Uh, Henry, did you want to make a, a, a comment? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but what I want to emphasize here is that it would be going against the will of the Father and the Son for them to ask to be removed from the very task that they've been commissioned to do. <laughs> do you see that? They, they, you, they, can't, they can't be removed from the trial. They, they, they have been commissioned to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. And so what I want us to think about is there were, we should pray that a trial be removed from our, from, from, from our, from our, our lives. But sometimes God places a trial in our lives and we're not, he's not looking to see if we have faith. He's not looking to see if we're going to trust in him and then remove it. Sometimes the trial is there for us to go through it. Okay. And we talked about that. And so in this situation here, God's will, Jesus's will is not that they be removed, but they go through the trial and it's specifically the proclamation of the word let's go on to any questions first any questions or comments if you'd like to to ask a question or make a comment please feel free to do it he go ahead henry okay he also uh, in acts chapter 2 verse 18 mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, in those days, I'm reading in God's Word translation. In those days, I will pour out my spirit on my servants, both men and women. They will speak what God has revealed. Yes. So, uh, and also verse 17, I will pour out my spirit to everyone. Your sons and daughters will speak what God has revealed. So, in... It's Acts 2, verses 16 to 18. Uh, yes, 16 to 18. So they are not asking, they have more fear, a reverent fear of the Lord of not doing or not being a witness. Yes. So they were asking for boldness. And, and can this be, can this be, here's the thing. Can we also say that they're asking in accordance with the will of God? So their desire has become in accordance with the will of God. And so, yeah, yeah and so, and think about this. This is a perfect example. I'm going to piggyback what Henry's saying. This is a perfect example in, in the Gospels when Jesus says, if you have faith like a mustard seed and you say, be lift, lift up this mountain and cast in the sea, it will be done. But that's in the context of, what, whatever you ask in the context of the Lord's will will be given, will be given uh, to you. And so great, great observation. That really piggybacks uh, what we were saying in Acts. What's Acts 1 verse? Verse 8. Okay. Acts 1 verse 8. Great. Seven. Seven. And actually, trace, you can do a word search, proclaiming the word of God. And it's all the way, that's a theme that goes all the way from Acts 1 until Acts 28. 
And so that could be uh, a study in itself. There's a class going on. Let's go ahead to verse 30 now, okay? Verse 30, okay. Let me ask someone. I'm going to ask Bethany to help me here, okay? Bethany, can you help me here? Okay. Uh, what are the verbs? Can you identify verbs for me, Beth? Stretch. Okay, stretch, stretch out. Great. One verb. Um, let's not worry about okay. that right now. Okay, so and any other verbs? Are performed. Are performed. Okay, great. So there's two verbs. Now, what kind of verbs are are they, Beth? Bethany? Um, the first one's action. Action. Okay, great. Action. What about the second one? Action. Yeah, action. Correct. Great. Okay, now, um, now for for the next thing we're going to identify is the the actor who is doing the action. So Bethany, who is doing the action in ver the first the first verb? The pronoun you. You. That's the actor. And who is who would that be? So let's identify that. Lord. Yes, Back Lord. Great. 29. So this is, so while they're asking for God to do something, they're already acknowledging that he is doing something. Okay. So, so we're looking at, they're asking him to, they're entreating him to do something for them while he's already doing something. So, so Bethany, there are several things that he's doing. Uh, what, what are the two things that he is, what are the two objects or what, are, what, are the, what is the, the thing that he's doing for the first verb? So we're still looking at stretch out. What's, stretch out his hand. Yes, okay, so that's, that's one object. The one object is his hand to do what? To heal. To heal. So that's, that's really another object. That's an object, and we could say action. Is everyone tracking with me there? Is that making sense for you? Yeah. Remember, we're not, we're not being strict, uh, um, grammatically correct. We're looking at, we're looking at relationships. So um, we're not, <laughs> it's not a grammar class. Um, okay, and then for the second, for the second verb, Bethany, what, what, is, what is the object? What's, being, what's the object in, in the second verb? Remember. Object or subject? Okay, we're not thinking, we're not thinking subject, verb, object. We're thinking actor, verb, object. Well, signs and wonders are being performed. So what would that be? Is that the object? Yes, okay. Remember, it's the object of the action. So is everyone tracking with me here? In English, signs and wonders is technically the subject, but it's actually the object of what's being performed. Okay. Now, Bethany, what is what is through the name of your servant, holy servant Jesus? Describing how the action is being performed. So I guess an adverb. Yes, it's an adverbial phrase. And then how? What's the what's the relationship? How is it describing the action? You mean like part of speech or uh, it's prepositional, but I don't yeah. know. Like, We're not looking at grammar. Let's let's go to let's go to the ad, to okay. Let's go to adverbial. There's different options here. Everyone can see this here. Now, Bethany, you look here, and I'll read these, and you tell me what you think it is. Okay? Could it be? Uh, is it advantage or disadvantage? Does that make sense? This is mm -hmm. this is a relationship that describes whom or against. Okay, so can <laughs> Advantage. A method. It's a method. Okay. It, it, it agency. A person which an actor is uses to accomplish a specific. Is it agency? Yes. Okay. So it can't be agency. All right. So what we're doing right now is I'm trying to show you how we think through the process of using this chart because we want to identify the precise relationship. Um, 
So it, it can't be association, correct? So we're, we're going to come down here, Bethany. What about, what about means? What is, what's the definition yeah, of means? Probably. Means is the relationship describes the way or instrument by which the action occurs. Okay, it's yeah. the way or the instrument. And that really makes sense here. What is the means by which these works are done? The name of your holy servant, Jesus. The name of your holy servant, Jesus. And what we're going to see is that this name, Henry, do you want to make a comment? Okay. Yeah. So, so, so the, the means by which these signs and wonders are being performed. Now, remember, in the Old Testament, it's the, it's the name of Yahweh. So, so think about this. In, in the Old Testament, the name of salvation, the name by which salvation comes, the way by which, which everything is done is the name of the Lord. Now in the New Testament, it's the name by which things are being done. It's not the name of the Lord, the, the Father. It's, it has a specific, specific person, a specific name, and that is the name of Jesus. And so even here, we see a, an implicit reference to the divinity of Jesus Christ, implicit, implicit, implied, okay? Now, coming back here, um, look at this here. So, now, we, this is one big clause here, okay? This is one big clause, okay? While you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed, through the name of your holy servant Jesus. So this is now Bethany. What kind of relationship is this with the previous? It's adverbial, but what, what does this what does this connecting word signify? Time. Yes, excellent. So do you see that that's that's giving time, and what kind of time is it? Is it time before, time after, or time during? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is concurrent or contemporaneous action, okay? So we always talk about this, right? We always talk about this. We, we talk about how uh, our assurance on a promise is only as good as the one who makes the promise or the one who does, okay? And so when we look at all through the Old Testament, that's why they're always recounting the works of God in the midst of the trial, in the wilderness. The song of Moses is given after the crossing of the Red Sea because they're recounting the deeds of God because those past deeds assure us of his promise that is yet to come, okay? And so why, why are they... Why are they quoting what he's doing while they're asking? The reason is that they're, 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 they're asking him to continue to act in accordance to what he is doing. So think about that for a second. How, how powerful is that? Um, when we are tempted to doubt in our prayers, we, we can ask, we can give an entreaty to God and then while we're giving the entreaty, we can say, we know that you are doing this work here with the Spirit. We know that you're transforming hearts. Uh, save so-and-so, or may your Spirit speak to them in accordance with what you are doing. I'm just giving an example. So as we pray, we need to be thinking, we just don't, we just don't ask, make a request, but we also call upon what the Lord is, has done and is doing. We see a past and a present work of the Lord here. Anyone want to make a comment or question? Or is that making sense? 
I think it's making sense. Let's go on here. Let's go on here uh, to verse 31. Okay, Danny, can you hear me? Danny, are you there? Maybe he's not there. Does someone want to try to do verse 31? Just the first, the first sentence there. I can hear you, but I was unmuted. Okay. Do you want to try to do verse 31? And when they prayed. So uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask the question and then you give me the answer, okay? Okay. Uh, Danny, what, what are the, can, I see two verbs. What are the two verbs in the, uh, in the, the first part of verse 30? Prayed and gathered. Yes, correct. Now, what kind of verbs are they? Past already it's done. Yeah, so it's a past tense, but I'm thinking of, is it, is it an entreaty? Is it a command? Is it a promise? Is it an action? Is it, what, what is it? Action. Action, yes. Action one. Action two. Great. Now, I'll just help out here. So when you're looking at, when you're looking at the sentence here, um, those are the two. Those are the two verbs, and then we're going to go to to find the actors. Or many times, it's also the subject, because when you have a subject and an actor, or when you have a subject and a verb, or an actor and a verb, you have a, a complete thought. So, uh, what are the two actors here, Danny? Can you give me the two actors? They. They. Yes. They are the two actors. Actually, there's there's a third verb. I'm sorry, Danny. What's the there's one more verb here? I missed it. It was hiding. <laughs> I see one more verb. What is that? Taken. Yes, great. So there's three actions here. Okay. Now, what what was shaken, Danny? What is the, the object of being shaken? Maybe there was an earthquake. Yes, but what what is the object? What what has what in the sentence what shook? The place. Yes, place. Correct. So this is the object here. Okay. And I'll just finish in the rest quickly. So this is going to give me a. This is a description here. Describing. Right, what, what, which place shook the place where they were gathered? Yeah, exactly. You got it. And then, I'm sorry, this is a typo. My, my fault here. And then, this just describes again the manner in which they were gathered. How are they gathered together? Okay. They were together. And so this really, again, picks up on uh, the, the corporate prayer. This is really a corporate prayer, okay? They have come together and prayed. And so this is really, this, this, is, this is another, this would be an example where people who don't believe in church membership, people who don't believe in being a part of a church, they just say, my, my life, my, my prayer life is personal. It's between me and God. Uh, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult to be gathered together to pray. <laughs> so, so even you, you see the, you see here, the, the corporate physical nature of what? Of body of Christ. You could say the church. All right. 
But again, this would be an example of where if someone is saying they're a follower of Jesus, we all met these, right? They're like, I'm a, I'm a, I have a faith, I have faith in God. Oh, well, what, what church, what church are you fellowshipping with? Solo. Oh, so, solo. Lone Ranger. Yeah, Lone Ranger. Don't I think, Danny, course. you made the comment, there are no Lone Rangers, right? Did you make that comment before in your sermon one time? Yeah, that's... But, uh, you can maybe if you're maroon in an island, uh, still. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're together. They're they're beseeching the Lord together as a body, and 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 there are times where we when we're in in a situation that we need to come together and pray. And so even this is this is probably one of the places where that 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 began a, a prayer meeting, where we come together as a body to pray. And so. A prayer meeting is very biblical because we're coming together as a body to pray. Alex, did you have a comment? Did you want to say something? Oh, maybe not. Alex. I saw his hand. I'm, I'm like a Baptist. I see the hand. <laughs> That's a joke from my uh, fundamental Baptist days. Um, okay, let's do the last. <laughs> let's just finish here. So we also have this... Uh, this when here, when they had prayed. So after they prayed, I'm sorry, when they prayed, the place shook. So again, this is, this is, um, this is, a, um, now this is the antecedent time. So after they pray, the place shakes, okay? It really indicates the presence of the Spirit, the presence of God. Um, and then look at this. You have this connecting word here. And as they prayed, filled. Sorry, go ahead, Danny. What was that? They were they were all filled. Yes, great. Okay, good, 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 good. So, Danny, you can fill. So they they were filled. This is an action, right, Danny? Yeah. What are they filled with? The Holy Spirit. So here, the Holy Spirit is the object. Now, Danny, what is? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, this is wrong. Who who is the object here? Who is being filled? The day, day. Yes. So you see how it's so important uh, that we identify the actor and the versus the subject. They're being filled. What are they being filled with, or who are they being filled with? Uh, uh, Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit. So this is an object, and this is a this is the thing, the thing by which is being filled. So. They're being filled, and the Holy Spirit is coming inside them, okay? So, Danny, who is the actor here? Uh, the, the Holy Spirit. So, the, the, the Holy Spirit is, the, he, there, it's coming inside, but who is the one that's doing the filling? The, the Holy Spirit is the one filling. But in this, yeah, it's true that he is, at times, the... the, the uh, um, Okay, I'm just gonna be very, I'm gonna be very crude here. Okay, I want us to see it here. Okay, the Lord. Yes, the Lord, Henry. I, I want to show this here. Okay, of course there is a sense the Holy Spirit fills us. Okay, I don't want to, but in this specific example, and the reason for this is that the reason why I'm emphasizing the Lord, Danny, is that yeah. we see Him continuing to act. The Lord is the one acting. He is the actor. We are not the actors. The Holy Spirit is not the actors. The Lord is the one doing this. So I'm just going to be very grotesque here. Just okay. imagine as a person. Uh, this is the church, right? The, the Holy Spirit is, is being filled, and I'm just going to draw a son. It's God who is the one that's filling us with the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is going inside of us, okay? So, that, so the one who is doing this, the doer of this, is 
the Lord. Okay. Okay. And th this is the reason. The reason is, let's finish here, and then we're going to talk theology here. Okay. So they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then there's one act. <laughs> there's one act that they do. What is that? To speak. To speak. Okay. Why did you say you were going to be grotesque? In, in the drawing here, because oh, I'm... Oh, okay. I'm, I, yeah. I thought you were going to say something like no. inappropriate. No, no, no. <laughs> I was like, what? No. no. I'm showing, yeah, I, it's very, it's very basic. basic yeah. <laughs> action, action, and, and the object is the word, and the means by which they're doing this is the manner, I should say, boldness. So, wow. And this is. Now, now the actor here is who? The the disciples. The, the disciples. The they. Disciples. They. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The they. Yes, yes. Correct, correct, Henry. Yeah, good. So, what I want us to see here. Now we're going to start talking about big picture. Okay. Well, first off, any questions or comments? Or this is making sense so far. This is making sense. Yeah. What, 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 okay. So what I want us to see here is that in this prayer, okay, I'm going to go back out and look at the big picture, okay? I'm going to start making some, um, some, uh, let me just get my other picture here. Actually, I'm just going to share. It might be hard for me to draw, so let me just, let me just show you what I already have drawn here for us. So here's my, here's my notes here. So what I want us to see here is this, okay? Everyone can see that, right? So in the structure of the prayer is you have the address of the Lord, and then you have these descriptions of who he is. Number one, he is the ruling God or the God that is, is, the, is, is sovereign, in control, okay? Next, he is the creator God, okay? Again, emphasizing his doing, his power. And then number uh, the... So that should be three. That should be the third description here. This should be three. I have the ordaining God because watch this, okay? Who through the mouth of your of of your father of our father David said, what we have here is this is a scripture citation from Psalm two, okay? And then. They describe its fulfillment, okay? So this is why I say ordaining God, because they say, you ordained this, this is the citation, here is the fulfillment, okay? And then you know it's for sure, because they say, uh, verse 28, to do whatever your hand or plan predestined to happen. So this is the ordaining God. This is what he does, okay? And then you have here, the two requests, okay? So you have who is God? He's the ruling God, the creator God, the ordaining God, and here's the examples. And then the, the entreaty is in the middle. Look upon their threats, okay? While he's doing, right? While he's doing. And then look, you have the request and then the answer. <laughs> See that? <laughs> the answer. After they pray, the request is answered. Does everyone see that? It's very it's amazing, right? And so some, some thoughts or comments here. Big idea. Big idea. If God ordains the crucifixion of his son and everything goes according to plan, we can guide, uh, uh, sorry, should be a he. He can guide. He can. He, not we, he, he. He can guide and protect his children. The prayer is the strength to speak boldly. If God can crucify, bury, raise again, 
exalt to the right hand of him the greater thing, surely he can grant us boldness to speak the word. Surely. Okay? Any thoughts or comments? Or just maybe just comments you want to think you're, that you're thinking about? Oh, what on the, the the plan of God uh, is uh, always uh, accomplished. Yes, it is. It is. God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. Bethany, can you say that louder <laughs> for everyone? Our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. Is that Psalm 115? Psalm 115, I think. Three, one, three. I think. Yeah. Now, I, 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 do want to, I do want to move along here, and I want, to, I want to look at one other passage because I really want us to see this, okay? I really want us to see this because what we talked about last week and several weeks before in the Lord's Prayer is that Scripture is not simply looking into the future and, and describing an event that's going to happen. But scripture is actually to happen. Go ahead. The one who causes to happen. Yes, the scripture is the one who causes it to happen. This is this is a very perfect example of it. This is a perfect example <laughs> that scripture, when God speaks, what he says is going to happen. Okay? So let's look really quick at Acts, Acts 3, 17 to 19. Acts 3. Acts 3. 17 to 19. Acts 3, 17 to 19, okay? This is, again, looking back at the crucifixion event, looking at the crucifixion event, okay? And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but God, who foretold by the mouth of the prophets that his Christ would suffer he thus fulfilled. <laughs> okay. Um, Where is that? Acts 3, 17 and 18. Okay. Now, what I really want us to see here is when you look in the original language, when you look in the original language, what it literally says is, is but God, comma, what he said what he foretold, comma, he fulfilled. So it's God fulfilled. So the, when you're looking at the actor here, the actor for fulfilled is God. And it's very clear in the act. It, it's very clear in, 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 uh, in the language. I, I can bring that up. Maybe. Yeah, so it's, but God, what he foretold, he fulfilled. Okay, so again, it's God is the one is the actor, and so it, this is so important for us, especially for now. This might be basic for us, but for our for our those who are underneath us, those who are our members, they need to understand that God doesn't simply know the future. He doesn't simply know our situation. He. He's the one that controls the future. He's the one that ordains the future. He's, so the control is not simply in knowledge, but in action. It's in knowledge and action. Okay? Any thoughts or comments? We're getting late here. So, um, okay. so it's clear. But, uh, now, the big picture you said. So it's not only that God knows what will happen, but He's the one who causes things to happen. Yes. According to His plan. Yes. And, and this, is a, this is a perfect example right here. This is the perfect. The crucifixion is. There's other examples, but this is the perfect example, and and it's the most non-negotiable, clear example that God is in complete control. Yeah. And, and, and for us, it's, com it's, com it's comforting because God has promised us salvation. So if, if he's in complete control, 
and we see it in the crucifixion, surely the salvation can be given to us. Yes. Now there's, uh, uh, did you want to make a comment? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, so there, there was some other questions about this, uh, um, uh, this word predestination. The person who asked it though, Dexter and Ray were not, are not here. So I'll wait to answer the question for when they're here. And um, I think Grace, you had a question about, about the difference in translation for the did rage and, and do rage. Is that true, Grace? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. So, yes. I, yeah. So I looked. I looked in different different translations have do. So the, the two options, just so that we can write it out here. Let me go back to our. The, the, the options here are. Are uh, do rage. And did rage. Okay. Now I, I and some translations have do, some tra some translations have did. Okay. And and I looked up the the Greek. I looked up the Hebrew because this is a quotation from Psalm. This is quoting Psalm two verse seven. Okay. And both are possible. <laughs> Both are possible. Now, what I, what I do want us, I want us to look at one passage here. And what I want us to see here is I, I do want us, I want to show a picture. If, if I can put a, a, a timeline here. Okay, let me just do this again. Everyone can see that, right? So this is time. Okay, so I'm just going to put here. This is the time in which Psalm 2-7 prophesied, okay? This is the cross event, okay? So this would be Acts. This could be Acts 4. So actually, let me. So then Acts, Acts 4, 24 to 31 is looking back at here and looking back here, right? If, they're, where, if you're standing here, you're looking back, correct? Everyone understands? Everyone's tracking with me? Okay. Uh, I think, yes. uh, Psalm 2, verse 7. Yes, but now you're asking someone, sure, if I'm correct there. It should be, it should be, what does it say? What does Psalm 2, 7 say? I will tell... Of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Okay, so it should be it should be Psalm, it should be Psalm um, uh, Psalm two, verse one and two. Sorry, Psalm Psalm two verses one. The quotation uh, Okay, okay. Verse one. Sorry. Okay, Psalm two verse one. <laughs> that, that was actually from Hebrews <laughs> saying that. Uh, but anyway, sorry. Um, our, our Hebrew study. Um, Okay, so if you can see here, why do the nations rage? Why do the people's plot in vain? Okay, so that's how Psalm 2, 1 is, is translated, okay? So the reason why sometimes you have the, the do and the did is that both are possible and, and the did rage is looking back at the rage that, occur, the, the rage that occurred here in the past. So that's why it's past tense. That's why the translators translate it past tense, okay? Do you understand that, Auntie Grace? Yes, Dean. Okay. Now, here is, here is the chink in the chain. It's not a chink in the chain. I say chink. Uh, it's the, it, sh it should be the beauty, okay? Let's go to uh, – I'll just go there for us. Revelation. Revelation. 11. Revelation 11. A 
Okay. So this is why the chink in the chain is that even though Psalm 2 verse 1 and 2 prophesied of the rage coming at the crucifixion, the prophecy is also yet distant future at the end of time. So look at Revelation 11 is at the end after the judgment, the, 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 uh, the seals have been opened, and you have the trumpet judgments. Okay, look at verse 16. This is, this is yet another quotation from Psalm 1 and 2. But, uh, let me start in verse 15. The seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Quotate, that's quoting from the Lord and his Christ in Psalm 1, uh, Psalm 2. The, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. The 24 elders who sat on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, <laughs> but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and those who fear your name, both great and small, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. And so what we see here is that coming back to this picture, there is yet a, uh, a, final, a final nation's raging. Does everyone see that? There's a yet final rage that's prophesied. Okay, in Revelation. So that's why even here you could you can still translate do. Do do tra do rage follows the actual wording in, in Psalm 2 1. And yet it's the, 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 what I what what it's picking up here is that there's still rage in the nations. It's gonna continue to to, to, to Revelation 12. So this rage does not cease, does not cease at the crucifixion this is this is going to continue to escalate until the end of this age so the answer grace is yes <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm just i'm just thinking that the biblical truth is revealed from the Old Testament, New Testament, and even in the last book, which is Revelation, it's already revealed. Yeah. <laughs> it's consistent. Yes, it's very consistent. Tell the guy, it's really <laughs> consistent. That's, that's really true. But here's something else. That, this is something else. This is, this is very deep, and I don't share this with a lot of people. More, the, the, But the benefit here is if you actually see here, there's actually, if you're, if you're looking at, at this psalm here, what you're seeing is at least one, two fulfillments. Okay, there's two, all right? The, 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 this psalm is pointing to one, two. All right, there's two fulfillments here, okay? But the benefit here is that when you're reading Old Testament scripture, especially the prophets, and this is uh, for this is also for I team Henry and Henry and uh, maybe Danny and anyone else listening, is that when we're reading the prophets, when we read the prophets, especially in Isaiah, sometimes we're like, man, that sounds like back in the days of Babylon. But wait a second, it sounds like the end of time. Or in, in the uh, Olivet Discourse, it sounds like the fall of Jerusalem in 70, 70 AD, but it sounds like the end of time. Prophecy is by design. It has multiple fulfillments, multiple reference, speaking to a near and then a distant. And we're, we, we're mistaken if we just say that's in the past. <laughs> it can no longer be fulfilled, okay? So th th this makes a whole lot of sense when... Um, you see partial fulfillment throughout the Old Testament. So Exodus was a partial fulfillment for the promised Abraham. Entering the promised land, if you go through Joshua, it was fulfilled. But then in Psalm, it's not fulfilled. The rest is still future. 
And so the benefit here is you can see in, in, in real time this multiple fulfillment. So when you're reading in the Old Testament, don't be confused. If something seems to be fulfilled, but yet still in the, in the future, it's because it is. <laughs> so it really made, for me, it made a whole lot more sense, especially when we're reading in the prophets. And there's, there's promises that seem to just be fulfilled in that day. But then the New Testament says, oh, no, it's still speaking to this. Um, and so, you know, this is kind of a, a tangential thing, but I, I want it to be a, a help a help in, in our study. I, I Let's close here. What I'll do is I'm going to have an outline prepared and I'll ask, answer questions and then we'll start the next prayer next week. I do want to bring it back to this, to this prayer here. The big picture is that this is, this is a, a similar but dissimilar prayer to the Lord's prayer. We have first the exaltation of the Lord in this prayer, just like in the other prayer. That was the first focus, um, and that's a lengthy focus. Here we have, uh, we have requests, and we have fulfillment of our requests here. And the prayer is prayed in accordance with the will of God. And so um, um, we need to be thinking about how we pray in accordance with the will of God. And what I would encourage here is in this prayer, what we see is, we, we see in this prayer here, they're praying scripture. <laughs> Do you see that? They're including scripture in their prayer. And so people talk about praying the scripture. This would be a way that we pray the scripture. This is a perfect example of praying the scriptures. You, you look at a past, you look at a past, you quote it, and then you describe how it's been fulfilled. You, 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 you then ask your requests on the basis of what God has done. So I really hope that this can broaden our, our prayer life, that we can see how we can, we can pray the, pro, the promises, the fulfillment, the scripture. Um, and it's very different from the Lord's Prayer. And so we really have now two big prayers, and they're significantly different. And like for me this morning, I tried to pray. I just tried to pray. I had, I had uh, a doxology from scripture. And I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't praying it word for word. I was praying, meditating, and adding to it. And so we need to be thinking about our prayer life will get very old if all we do is when we're very uh, self-centered and just asking for our request, it becomes very old. We're saying the same things over and over again. But if we can implement this, uh, the other benefit too is that we will really begin to have the heart of God and the heart of Jesus. And that will really align our prayers more and more with his will. Um, so anyway, that's that, That's all I have. I'll leave the floor open. It's late. I'm sorry that it's late. Um, any comments or questions? Um, I hope it was a blessing for you. Uh, I'll assign. I'll leave it. I'll send. I'll send out a homework assignment. I'll send a homework assignment out after for 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 Thursday. Okay. I'll go ahead. It's late. I'll go ahead and pray, and um, and we'll meet on Thursday. And uh, thank you so much for your attention. I'll, for those who couldn't attend, I'm so sorry, Eileen and, and Alex. But uh, we'll we'll put this on YouTube, and I'll share the link so that everyone has access to this. And uh, I was encouraged. You know, I was really encouraged tonight. Um, and uh, I hope that this can really broaden our prayer life. Um, our hope, our hope is in prayer. Um, um, you know. We, we don't have the power to do anything without the Holy Spirit. And, and it's the Holy Spirit and the will of God. And so we need to pray. You know, when we're struggling with a problem, instead of worrying, if we can pray and call upon God to act in accordance with his will. And uh, that's how we can, that's how we act. And then we, he gives us the power to act. In accordance with God. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for this time that we can study. We want to lift up your name. We want to exalt your name tonight, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Father God, we look back at the crucifixion, and during those dark hours, I just think of trials in our own life where 
we're in a dark hour and everything looks hopeless on the crucifixion. The Messiah was on the cross. There was no hope. It seemed as if the, the forces of evil had triumphed. He was being publicly shamed. No one was standing for truth, Father God. And yet this was your perfect ordained plan. It literally went perfectly in accordance to your plan, Father God. Jesus died and absorbed your wrath. He was buried and you vindicated him, rising him again on the third day, Father God. And we just, we are so thankful for that, Father. We praise you for your faithfulness. And because of the resurrection and exaltation, Jesus is now at your right hand. And we have this confidence that we know that you are going to bring us safely into your heavenly kingdom, Father God. Father, I just pray now for each one here, whether they're watching this delayed or live, or maybe sometime in the future, I just pray that we would have a vision of in, in expanding our prayer life, that we would not just pray our requests, which are so important, but that we would have a vision of your will, we'd have a vision of your works, we'd have a vision of who you are. And Father God, I ask in accordance with this prayer, may you continue to grant us boldness to proclaim your word faithfully every day in the midst of threats from our neighbors, in the midst of of trials and loss. May you give us the strength to continue to boldly proclaim your word. It's in your son's precious name, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Your son. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone and have a good night. Good night, Dean. Thank you.